Thanks for joining this how-to screencast brought to you by Salesforce Support. In this video, you'll learn how to set up your Salesforce org for lightning experience in preparation for creating your first B2B commerce storefront. We'll cover everything from understanding the B2B commerce platform to finalizing your commerce app settings. Let's get started. First things first, let's talk about how B2B commerce is built natively on the Salesforce platform. Lightning B2B commerce site storefronts can be built to scale Lightning fast through a configuration of apps, workflows, and low-code, and even no-code environments. B2B commerce is built on top of Experience Cloud, which allows for branding and other features focused on the digital-first experience and also benefits from the platform's key components such as flows, processes, data model, and integrations. Now that we have a good baseline, Let's talk about what needs to be enabled first in your B2B Commerce org. You'll need to complete these steps. Enable Salesforce experiences, update role and user settings, enable Salesforce CMS, enable order preferences. From your Salesforce org, click on the gear icon in the upper right corner to access setup. Once the page opens, go to the quick find box in the upper left and type in digital experiences. A menu will load underneath. Click on Settings. A page will load with a checkbox that says, Enable Digital Experiences. Check that box and you're all set. If you would like to allow users to self-register and log in using the standard external profile, then scroll down to Role and User Settings. You will see a checkbox labeled, Allow using standard external profiles for self-registration, user creation, and login. Make sure to review your external permissions and field level security settings before checking this box. The next step is to enable Salesforce CMS. In the quick find box search for profiles, click on the profiles link and then once it loads, look for the system administrator profile. Click on assigned apps and look for digital experiences, standard underscore Salesforce CMS. Ensure that the visible check mark is assigned to your profile. Then go back to the profile overview screen and click on Object Settings. Look for Digital Experiences Home. Ensure the tab settings is set to default on. Then check that CMS channels and CMS workspaces are also set to default on. The final step here is to enable order preferences so that customers can check out and access their orders. In the quick find box, search for order settings. In the sales menu below, click order settings. Select Enable Enhanced Commerce Orders and Enable Optional Price Books for Orders. These settings change some fields on the cart and order objects to make them function well with the rest of the Lightning Experience product. Now let's move on to configure the organization-wide defaults, OWD. These are sharing settings that can be configured based on if a user is internal or external and what level of access to data is needed. First, let's see these five important commerce objects and what the OWD should be set to for that object. To edit these settings from Setup, search for Sharing Settings in the Quick Find box, and then click on Sharing Settings and then Edit. Find each object from the chart and select the appropriate option and then click Save. Page layouts control the layout and organization of fields, related lists and actions on object record pages. When you're looking at an object record, like a product or an order, whether it's internal within the platform, or external on your storefront, the fields and related lists you see are controlled by page layouts. Let's walk through making some helpful modifications to the page layouts for four important objects. Product, order summary, order delivery group summary, and account in that order. We'll navigate to the setup page, then find the object manager. Let's start with the product object by searching product in the quick find box. About halfway down the page, we'll find the product standard object. We can navigate to the page layout by clicking on page layouts on the left-hand side and select product layout. At the top of the page, you'll see a list of fields that are available to be added to the page layout as needed. The page layout itself is down here separated into sections, showing the fields that are already there. Now, we want to add some helpful information about the product to the page layout namely the product SKU and product class fields. To do that, we can scroll right to find those fields, then drag and drop them to the page layout. Now we can see the SKU and the product class when we look at a product record. Finally, we'll hit save to make sure our changes are recorded. Now we can move on to the next object. 
we'll navigate back to the Object Manager. This time, we'll take a look at the page layout for the Order Summary object. Let's search for Order Summary, and once we find it, let's click in, find Page Layouts, and then select the Order Summary layout. In addition to fields, Page Layouts also contain actions, which are essentially shortcuts. Under Salesforce Mobile and Lightning Experience Actions, we'll hit the tool icon to see what actions are available on these records. And now we can simplify what's on this layout by getting rid of anything that we don't need. We'll leave the Start Reorder action there, so that our customers can reorder products when they're ready for more. And that's all, we're done. Once we remove all those extraneous actions here, we can go ahead and click Save. Let's move on to the Order Delivery Group Summary object. Once again, we'll type our search terms into the search bar, then click on Order Delivery Group Summary. Note that in addition to fields and actions, page layouts also contain related lists, which feature records with a lookup or master detail relationship to a different object than the one we're currently working with. We'll go to the Order Product Summaries Related List section, which is at the bottom. Here we can edit the fields that appear in this related list on the page layout. So we'll click the tool icon here and add product name to the list of displayed columns. That way, when we're looking in an order delivery group summary, we can also see the related order product summary and the product name. Once we've located product name in the available fields column, we can add that to the selected fields column, then we'll click OK and save that page layout. Finally, let's take a look at the account object, which is very frequently used in this context. As with the others, Search for the Account object, select Page Layouts, and then Account Layout. In this example, there are multiple related lists, as many different objects are associated with the Account object. If we want to keep the most important lists at the top, we can drag and drop these sections to change the order in which you see these related lists. Let's move some less important related lists down to the bottom. If we want to add a related list, we can navigate to the Related List section at the top, then we'll select the Carts Related List and put that up toward the top. Once we're happy with our Related List ordering, scroll back up and click Save. Now let's take a look at Permission Sets and how we can create and assign them for buyers, buyer managers, and account switchers at a high level. As a quick note, Salesforce does provide pre-configured permission sets for buyers and buyer managers. Let's come back to the Quick Find box and search for permission sets. If we select the letter B, we can see those buyers and buyer manager permission sets. The pre-configured buyer profile permission set allows access to the store, which means buyer users can see products and categories, as well as add products to wish lists. The buyer manager permission set includes all buyer capabilities, plus allowing access to manage carts and orders related to the buyer manager's accounts. Buyer Manager users can also manage contacts and reports. If these pre-configured permission sets don't meet your needs, we recommend cloning them and then customizing as necessary. It's also possible to create an Account Switcher permission set, which allows buyers or buyer managers to switch between accounts. Let's take a look at all of this in action. We'll search for Profiles in the Quick Find box, click in and navigate to the I to find the Identity User Profile. The option to clone is right at the top, so we're going to click to clone. We can choose whatever profile name that makes sense for our use case. We'll name this one Commerce User and hit Save. Now we can add users to this profile as needed. From the Commerce User profile that we just created, we can click the Assign Users button at the top. Note that there are options to create new users or add multiple existing users to this profile. The profile delineates the baseline object access for the user, but all the additional permissions needed by a commerce admin will be assigned through permission sets. We'll navigate back to permission sets, click to the letter C to find the commerce admin permission set. This permission set has all the baseline access to commerce admin features, as well as some additional permissions, such as creating reports, accessing CMS, and more. You can assign this permission set to any users who are going to be commerce admins for your org. And there you have it. We've created a new user with basic commerce admin rights. Lastly, let's finalize setting up the commerce app. To optimize the app for your commerce admins and merchandisers, you can add objects and tabs. 
Let's take a look at how we can do this. We'll start by finding the Commerce app by using the App Launcher. That should bring us to the Commerce homepage. The first thing we'll do is add more items or rearrange items in this navigation menu. We can click Edit to customize the menu. If we don't see something we need, we can click on Add More Items at the top and search for it. For example, an item that isn't here but might be useful is Buyer Group Price Books. So let's search for that and use the plus sign to add this item to our navigation menu. We can also reorder items. For example, maybe we need to put Commerce Setup closer to the top because we access it often. Now let's click Save, and once that saves, we should see it reflected in the navigation menu here. Finally, we recommend that you have Commerce Setup and Price Book objects to be enabled tabs by default for this app. Let's make sure that's the case. We'll go back to Setup, then search for Profiles. Now, let's select the System Administrator profile by clicking over to the letter S here. We'll select Object Settings, and now we'll scroll down to find Commerce Setup and Price Book and confirm that it says Default on Under the Tab Settings column. If they aren't, you can click Edit at the top of the page to toggle them on. Last but not least, let's go back to that Commerce app and go to the Commerce Setup page. If you're coming to this section for the first time, you'll see a quick link under Commerce Reports that allows you to install some standard out-of-the-box reports, such as average order value, orders by date, and total orders. Having these reports easily accessible will provide quick insights about your storefront. And there you have it. You've learned how to set up your org for B2B Commerce Lightning experience, from understanding the B2B Commerce platform, to configuring permission sets, and finalizing the Commerce app. For more information and in-depth tutorials, check out help.salesforce.com or visit us on the trail at trailhead.salesforce.com. Thanks for watching.